British Steel at Rotherham installed a computer to control the furnaces. We asked two of these senior melters if they thought there was as much satisfaction in the job now that a computer was taking a share in it. No, I don't think there is. I should think it's like automatic pilot on an aeroplane. If he just sits back and lets it have a go, I don't know there's any more satisfaction in that, is there? I think you like to think that you're in charge of a thing and that at the end of it, you've achieved something. At a time of full employment, a debate was beginning about the long-term effects of automation. In 1966, it reached television. Two main points of view emerge. In the simplest possible terms, one is optimistic and the other pessimistic. Now, the optimists think that in a situation of nearly full employment, which is what we have at the moment, when you move automation into an industry, you release workers who are so badly needed that they enable other industries to expand and start producing goods which raise the general level of prosperity. The pessimists, on the other hand, fear that a situation could arise in which workers displaced by automation from one industry fail to find jobs because all the other industries are doing the same thing, installing machines and turning out the men. The result will be chronic, wide-scale, even lifelong unemployment for millions. We could have something like one in eight out of work in the early 1970s because of automation. If we sat back and did absolutely nothing, this is about sort of three million, and this represents, if you like, a kind of rate of redundancy of between 200,000 and 300,000. In the 70s, a new factor appeared, the silicon chip. By drastically cutting computing costs in half each year, it now made personal computing possible. Long before the IBM personal computer appeared, word processors and personal micros were signaling change. Pundits began to predict that computers would affect whole new areas of office work, destroying jobs in the hitherto protected service sector. In the late 70s, even in Germany, the unions were calling the silicon chip the job killer. In Britain, white collar unions like ASTMS were clearly very worried as their public campaign showed. Overall, it must mean a diminishing of the number of jobs available, not only in the UK, but in every industrialized country, in Europe, in the United States, absolutely everywhere. It will also go on over a considerable time period. This diminishing will go on perhaps over 20, 30, maybe even up to 50 years. What really happens is that in the processes, when microelectronics comes into processes, you lose jobs. Take printing, where we've lost a great many jobs in the traditional Fleet Street graphics. On the other hand, new products, which have got microelectronics in them, create jobs. Look at the Japanese with a video recorder with the very large um, chip and so forth. So what you get is a balance between the two. When we were filming a series on robotics in the United States, we saw a most extraordinary factor there that was actually making robot bears that would sing and act the part in a, a chain of pizza parlors. And you can see now this is Billy Bob Broccoli. And it's a sort of piece of industry. It's a huge factory is that it was inconceivable that could exist without new technology and no, nobody could have forecast that it would happen. It's, it's really quite intriguing because not only does it provide work for people to actually make the bears but also to maintain them and to provide the music for them to sing in these great big chains. Absolutely, of it's powers. an awful new industry but it has created jobs. <laughs> what else do you see as creating new jobs? One of the things that, one of the areas that has grown very rapidly is uh, the professional area and technical area. For example, in the United States, about half a million new jobs have been created for technicians in information technology, another 300,000 for computer specialists, and many, many more related to robotics and so forth. I think that that's going to be the great growth area, and the great dropping area is going to be, not yet, because it's been very slow, the clerical area. I think the clerical area will probably drop by many hundreds of thousands in the next five or six years. Well, maybe we haven't really seen the major effects of the micro-revolution yet. The people who predicted that it would sweep through offices like a plague have, to a large extent, been proved wrong. In most offices in Britain, we've been very slow to introduce automation. Or perhaps the technology is too expensive, or perhaps it's simply not good enough yet, not easy enough to use.